Captain Gal here reporting for duty. Have you ever tried to put graphics behind your subject in your videos, but then you go over to use the masking tool in Premiere Pro and it's just so slow and clunky and then you try to track the mask and then it just doesn't work and it's so slow and well, let's not do that. Don't worry. Today I'm going to show you how easy it is to jump on over to After Effects to do the masking and rotoscoping there and then connect safely back into Premiere Pro. All right, everybody, fasten your seatbelts and let's take off. First off, I just want to thank my father-in-law for lending me this awesome pilot's costume for this video. All right, everybody, we have reached our cruising altitude here and starting off in Premiere Pro, I'm going to open up the Storyblocks plugin here to download some stock footage that we can mask. Once it's downloaded, drag it here into our timeline. Now, if I wanted to put something behind this person here. I'm gonna go to effect controls and under opacity, let's hit the pen tool to draw a mask around our subject. Now we all have a love-hate relationship with the masking tool in Premiere Pro, and it's really just designed for simple masking, at least at the time of this video. For example, if I wanted the mask to roughly follow his head, I can comfortably do that right here in Premiere Pro. However, if I wanna mask the whole body, using After Effects Roto Brush tool is way faster. And trust me, I wanna get you to your destination faster. Pilot gal here. All right, so for the first leg of the trip, we need to first duplicate the footage here so we have an unmasked version waiting for our return. And here on the top one, let's right click and hit replace with After Effects composition. So After Effects is now open. And if I save this project now, and then I go back to Premiere Pro, you can see that this clip has been turned into a dynamically linked clip. So now anything that we do in After Effects will be reflected in Premiere Pro. And that's why we duplicated it because it's always good to have a backup plan. All right, so to get started, let's grab the Roto Brush tool from the top here and let's double click on the comp. And now we're moved to the layer tab. And this is important. This is where we will be masking. Now I can start using the brush here to draw green lines on our subject and After Effects will try and figure out here which part of the footage is our subject. Now, if some unwanted parts get selected, which it does happen sometimes, let's hold Alt or Option on a Mac and then my brush will turn red here. And now wherever I draw over, that part will get removed from our selection. I can also hold Control or Command and hold the left mouse button and drag it up or down to resize the brush so it's easier to mask narrow spots. If the pink outline here is a little hard to see, I can use these icons down here to switch how we view the mask, which I think is helpful and different for everybody. So once I'm happy with the roto on this first frame, I can then hit the space bar and After Effects will start to play and keep the mask on our subject. If at any point things get a little unstable and wonky, you can of course just pause and fasten your seatbelt and go back to the first frame here where things start to go wrong and then you can fix it with the Roto Brush tool. Basically, we're just teaching After Effects what to look out for so it can better predict those boundaries of our subject. After only adjusting the mask in a few spots, I think I got a pretty good cutout. And now I can go back to the comp to see what it looks like against the black background. And just an important note about hardware with rotoscoping, as it can take a toll on your computer if you don't have the right hardware, I always recommend for After Effects at least 32 gigabytes of RAM. And if you're using Windows, I recommend a graphics card in the NVIDIA RTX series for a smoother experience. Right here, I actually have the new Dell Precision 5690 and this workstation is fully spec'd out. It has the NVIDIA RTX 5000 with 16 gigabytes of VRAM, which is different from your computer's RAM. And it has the new AI capable CPU, the Intel Core Ultra 9 processor. I mean, just look at how fast it rotos. Sheesh, we're not done. Now, if we go up to the Roto Brush tool here, After Effects also has a refine edge tool, and this is perfect for masking complicated hair or trees, for example. So I have another example here of this person walking and her hair just goes wild. Now, just using the normal Roto Brush tool, it won't be enough. Here, I can pick the refine edge tool and draw over those edges of the hair. And as you can see, you'll get a black and white mask for the 
spot. The white parts are what's included in the mask and the grayish parts are a bit more transparent so we can get more of the details of the hair. Now, if I hit play, the roto mask here and the hair mask should stay with our subject. Now, before we refine the mask even further, I wanna tell you where I got this amazing footage from. Storyblocks. Using Storyblocks means that me and my editing team can download an unlimited number of stock video clips, motion graphics, sound effects, photos, and much, much more. For example, if we've reached the point of the flight where we're going to serve beverages and some snacks, I can have my editor search for stock video clips of flight attendants passing out snacks or drinks to the people on the plane. It's just a great way to help illustrate our story and cut away to things that we don't have to shoot, but instead we can rely on their stock footage library to help us tell a funny story. And we get all of this with one predictable subscription cost. We don't have to worry about pay per clip pricing. You can download and try out these different clips until you find the one that fits that particular project. And as you've seen earlier, you can easily access Storyblock's high quality assets right here inside of Premiere Pro and After Effects using their plugin. And you can download this plugin directly from the Creative Cloud desktop app. Here in After Effects, after masking out my subject, I can quickly search for overlays and even pre-made motion graphics templates here in the plugin to add behind or even on top of my subject without ever even having to leave After Effects. And as a captain, I'm always trying to find the safest and fastest route. To get started with unlimited stock media downloads at one set price, head on over to storyblocks.com slash premiergal or click the link in the description. Thanks to Storyblocks for sponsoring this segment of the video. And now let's get back into refining our mask. Our flight is nearly halfway over now and our mask is looking good, but we can do a little bit more refinement by going to the effect controls. Here we get settings for our roto brush and the refine edge tool. So the first option here is to change back to version 2.0 or 1.0 of the roto brush tool, which I don't recommend. 3.0 is just far better. Moving down, there's the option to invert the foreground and background. And this is great in case you wanted to cut out the subject instead of the background. Under roto brush mat here are the settings to refine the edges. I can make it softer. I can add some more contrast here for a more defined edge. I can shift the edge outwards or inwards. And I can also reduce chatter, which helps a lot with the blinking edge problem. And below that is refine edge matte. And here we get mostly the same settings as above. For example, the chatter reduction here can help a lot with the hair. You can also turn on this motion blur button and roto brush will make sure to give you smooth edges for the parts that, you know, have some more motion to it. And finally, decontaminate edge color will help clean up and smooth the edges even further. Sometimes it makes it better though, and sometimes it makes it worse. I recommend just turning it on and off and testing it out with the shot that you're working with. Once everything looks good, make sure to hit the freeze below and After Effects will freeze our mask. If you don't freeze it, every time you play the roto brush, it'll just keep recalculating it every time in real time. And that can really slow down your computer and start giving you inconsistent looks, which you don't want. So. Remember to freeze, kid. So this is looking good. Of course, you can spend some more time refining, but this is just an example for this tutorial. So let's hit save and everybody, let's fly on back to Premiere Pro. Back in Premiere, if I disable the bottom layer, you'll see that we now have a cutout of our subject. Using this setup, I can add anything in between these layers to make it appear behind our subject. At this point, if you've used Dynamic Link before, you might notice, unless you have a really beastie computer, that the playback might be kind of choppy. So if you don't have a beastie computer, a workaround is to duplicate the Dynamic Link layer here so we can go back and adjust it afterwards. And then disable the bottom one and right click on the top one. Choose Render and Replace. Make sure to choose QuickTime ProRes 444 so the video stays transparent. If you pick a different rendering format, then the transparent parts will actually render out black, which you don't want. So then hit OK and Premiere will render this out as a video file, which will be much more smoother to play back compared to trying to, you know, play it inside the timeline and get that choppy feedback. But what if you have a Beastie computer? Let's put my new Dell Precision 5690 to the test. And as no surprise, the playback was smooth, 
but in any case that you want to render it out for smoother playback, you can hit enter to render it. So that way you can preview the effect better. If you're feeling comfortable with After Effects, there's no need to just use it to cut out our subject. If I right click on the dynamic link layer here, I can choose edit original and our After Effects project here will open up again. And here I can fit things even better into my scene with camera track. Don't worry, we're not gonna go into detail on this today, but I do recommend checking out a video I made on adding 3D objects to your scene where we do cover some of that tracking. But basically I can track my scene here and add 3D text or even 3D models to the scene and have it follow the camera movements. And since we have our subject masked out, we can also add things behind him as well. For example, if there's a car commercial and there was no car behind him, you can add a car behind him just to make it feel more real to that particular project. So getting a good mask is super important because even if you have the best motion graphic to put behind, the subject. If the mask doesn't look good, it's just gonna look cheap. And I'm happy to say that we have safely reached our destination and hopefully all these tips can make rotoscoping and masking so much easier for you and less intimidating. You can now hop between both the programs or stay in After Effects if you find it easier. And as always, stay creative and keep creating better video with Gal. Captain Gal out. See you next time. Bye. Whoop.